Just how wealthy was Black Wall Street? Well, today we're going to find out. The stories of Greenwood's prosperity became legend in the black community, and in fact, in the whole world. The creation of the powerful black community known as Black Wall Street was intentional. In 1906, O.W. Gurley, a wealthy African American from Arkansas, moved to Tulsa and purchased over 40 acres of land that he made sure was only sold to other African Americans. The young entrepreneur had just resigned from a presidential appointment under President Glover Cleveland in order to strike out on his own. Mr. Gurley became a multimillionaire and he was the owner of several businesses, including his prized possession, which was a hotel. He also provided an opportunity for those who migrated from the harsh oppression of Mississippi. Another important visionary who contributed to the success of Black Wall Street was Mr. J.B. Stratford. J.B. Stratford had graduated from Indiana University with a law degree and had moved to Greenwood to purchase various land vacancies in the area. After buying these vacant spaces, he would then sell them to African American residents for redevelopment so that these empty spaces could be transformed into residential houses and profitable businesses. By 1921, Mr. Stratford had been considered one of the wealthiest in the country as he owned numerous properties in Greenwood and even had his hotel named after him, the Stratford Hotel. O.W. was a subscriber to the philosophies of Booker T. Washington, while J.B. was a follower of the more radical W.E.B. Du Bois. Nonetheless, their differences aside, the two men began to develop an all-black district in the unincorporated stretch of land north of Tulsa's train station. O.W. and J.B. both became rich as the oil industry boomed in Tulsa and hundreds of African Americans immigrated to Greenwood. The 40 acres that were purchased resulted in a thriving community that populated a 35 square block district. There were over 600 businesses and on Black Wall Street were attorneys, real estate agents, dentists, pilots, architects, musicians and singers, entrepreneurs, doctors, pharmacists, dry cleaners, plumbers, barbers, hairdressers, professors and teachers, nurses, bankers, newspaper editors, among many other professions who offered their services in the neighborhood. A dollar circulated 36 to 100 times and it remained in the Greenwood District almost a year before leaving. To this day, no other community has been able to duplicate that type of circulation. There are communities today, however, where the dollar stays in about 30 days and 45 days, but no other community, as has been said, has ever been able to match that type of circulation. Although it wasn't the only one, there were prominent black business districts in Durham, North Carolina, Richmond, Virginia, and Rosewood, Florida. The people of Greenwood achieved a level of black economic success and self-determination that had never existed before in the United States. Less than 60 years removed from slavery, to put that in perspective. Despite racial discrimination and Jim Crow segregation, the Greenwood District offered proof that black entrepreneurs were capable of creating abundant wealth. When left alone, our ancestors thrived. And one such example is this. In the entire state of Oklahoma, there were only two airports. Yet six black families owned their own private planes in the district of Black Wall Street. Wow, imagine that. Folks, think about that for a second. There were two airports in the entire state of Oklahoma. Yet six families owned private planes. What an accomplishment. Many of the homes had indoor plumbing before those in the white areas did. Booker T. Washington actually coined it Negro Wall Street. It was also known at that time as Little Africa. What made Black Wall Street truly special was that it was a place an ordinary person can go, such as a sharecropper, and have a respectable life, find decent paying work, and hope for a better life for his or her children. With oil men relocating to Tulsa, the resulting high demand for domestics enabled blacks to attain unheard of wages. Maids earned $20 to $25 a week, chauffeurs earned $15, gardeners earned $20, janitors, shoe shiners, and porters earned around $10. 
Domestics made up almost two-thirds of Greenwood's population, the remainder being professionals and business owners, whom the maids and chauffeurs hoped their children could imitate one day. As you can see, Black Wall Street was very well-rounded. Keep in mind, the domestics spoken of were actually blacks working for other blacks. The average income of black families in the area exceeded what the minimum wage is today. These were people who were actually living in the lap of luxury. Black Wall Street was its own city. It was a booming self-contained community and many of the residents lived in luxury. Greenwood Avenue had been lined with hotels, restaurants, furriers, and even an early taxi service using a Ford Model T. For that time, that would be like driving a modern day Bentley. This is actually a picture of the Stratford Hotel owned by Mr. J.B. Stratford. And he is a great example of excellence and abundance in the early 1900s. As stated earlier, he was a multi-millionaire. In addition to Mr. Stratford and Mr. Gurley, the district's most successful entrepreneurs reinvested in the community, building parks, schools, churches, theaters, banks, and they had access to many luxuries that whites in the same city did not. As a matter of fact, white people routinely borrowed money from black banks, and this was even done during the Great Depression. Here's a picture of bank owners and employees taking a picture in front of one of the black owned banks. Here's the picture of one of the theaters that lined the Greenwood district. During that time, while showing the silent movies, they would have a live piano player playing alongside the movie, which was the custom of the day. So you see, Black Wall Street had all of the modern day conveniences and luxuries. They were a community that really wanted for nothing. The schools were superior to those of the white areas. When the average student went to school on Black Wall Street, he wore a suit and tie because of the morals and respect they were taught at a young age. Black Wall Street contained a business college. As a matter of fact, the children of Greenwood's professionals attended Columbia Law School, Oberlin College, Hampton University, the Tuskegee Institute, Spelman College, and Atlanta University. Black Wall Street was a dream in progress and a symbol of black success. Just how wealthy was Black Wall Street? The truth is, we'll really never know. But based on the facts, we can confidently say that today's worth will be well into the billions. And just think, that was a self-contained community that was just developing. There is no telling where it would be today. Although Greenswood, Tulsa, Oklahoma may be a distant memory, fortunately for us, we can still keep the Black Wall Street spirit alive today. With the Black Wall Street app, we now have access to thousands of black-owned businesses in the palm of your hand, desktop, or tablet. <laughs> 